What is good? We're back. We have a one quarterback tight end premium rookie mock for your pleasure. Can, you going to hit me with it or what? <laughs> I thought you were going to give me a ready to roll, but whatever. <laughs> ready to roll! This one is strictly for you guys because I, yeah. I don't really mess with too many one quarterbacks. Some of the OG home Bull leagues. Well, Bull yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the home leagues, still one quarterback, but if I'm getting anything new, I want super flex. I want more people there. I want more things available. I want more options. Uh, so I'm going super flex, but one QB is still important. I understand. But really the biggest thing is we got to figure out about these quarterbacks. So we'll, we'll, we'll spend some time talking about where and when to take these quarterbacks. We got Big D back in Seattle, of course, not, not in this chair anymore. Big D, what up? Back in the rain, brother. Back in the rain. Yeah, I'm excited about this one QB situation we got going on. This is um, these drafts are always fun after being so tuned in to Superflex and tight end premium, you know. But uh, one QB is still a thing, and and yeah. I don't I don't mind it. I um, I've got like you said, I've got an older league that has it. I think it's a really good transition league if you're going from you know redraft, uh, redraft yeah. or even keeper into dynasty it's a good way to transition and just get, understand values and start to do that with without so many moving pieces so um valuable time and i'm excited to talk about this because it's uh, a lot different than you know uh what what we're used to in in yeah. the in the two quarterback uh tight end we don't we don't want to turn into crossfit uh super flexors you know <laughs> yeah. where everyone well, you know, who's those... in super flex is like i'm, I'm in super flex but well we kind of have to because you need to know the context. So. I like I like that the transition. You know, an, an easy, easy, nice little transition. You know, you dress up like what you want to be before you go cutting the parts off. You know, that way it's easy, mm -hmm. easy transition. See if you like it. Dip your toe in a little bit. Um, yeah. So we are going to start off. <laughs> Normally, this is a discussion whether it's Caleb or Marvin Harrison, but we're one quarterback, so it's Marvin Harrison at the one one. It's Malik Neighbors at the one two. It's Roma Dunze at 1-3. It's Brock Bowers at 1-4. And then Lad McConkey, probably maybe the biggest um, surprise maybe to start this thing off. But I can't argue too hard against it. Some could, I suppose. And then 1-6, Jonathan Brooks going down uh, there at the 1-6. So, Big D, what were your thoughts here? I feel like we're pretty chalk 1 through 4, 1-5 and 1-6 get, you know, a little different in there you got a real problem with any of these picks no i don't really have a problem i mean i, I was i was in a, i was surprised to see bowers up higher but i mean you know he's he's great and it's a new new transition there just like it doesn't matter if it's super flex or one qb we're, we're trying to figure out bowers uh power bowers um draft stock so um lad i i probably would have thomas ahead of lad and probably worthy but at the same token i it's not like it's a tier above i mean it's they're probably all in the same tier i i haven't necessarily fully ranked out my tiers which i probably should but um if i'm on one five uh like mike here was and you know i'm looking at the names i mean you know i'm i'm not dismissing lad so i guess that's kind of tells me it's a tier yeah, I mean, I've seen plenty of people on the internets who are the analytical guys who are, will, will de dismiss Lad and just say that he's not any good. I think that's that's pretty silly, and he's walking into a really, really good opportunity. For me, I have and have had those, you know, it, I didn't have to change anything because everything worked out, and sometimes it happens like that. But Lad, Worthy, and Thomas in, in that second tier of wide receivers. Uh, so, I, you know, I don't really have any problem with that. I mean, if you're, if you're being honest, I mean, who... who who could get the best volume right off the rip? It would seem like Lad would be the guy out of the gate who could really uh, break things right off the rip. He could break things. I said right out of yeah, the gate. Yeah, I mean, just opportunity, opportunity right there, right? Is 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 wide open for him. But it's also a new, it's a new program down there in uh, in the Chaja land. So uh, you know, Worthy is is um, interesting in his landing spot. But for me, it'd probably be Thomas, just because I feel like. You know Calvin Ridley, but everything uh, Calvin Ridley's gone, and everything else is kind of the same. So Zay, I can Zay kind Jones of feel gone. Like, yep, Zay's gone. Uh, so they're Zay. committed to to Kirk, and and Kirk is the one. No, I'm just kidding. Zay's um, still my favorite you know, they, player. They're looking for the alpha, and I think Thomas could fit that. Sorry, but yeah, I, I mean Thomas. it's 
but I, I mean, yeah, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not getting red in the face, argue worthy. That's, yeah. that's for sure. I would agree. I think there's, you know, people argue about vacated targets, but I mean, there is, there, there has to be, uh, some redistribution of targets over there. We love Kirk around here. Uh, Zay's out of there. So, I, you know, you're going to get Thomas and Gabe probably on the outsides there and Kirk in the slot and, and we can, you know, move Gabe and, and everybody around a little bit here and there, but that's probably going to be what you're going to see. And Calvin Ridley was probably a little misused last year, but Brian Thomas probably fits what they were doing with uh, Calvin a little better and, and big gives you a bit bigger, more physical target to get to. Uh, so I don't hate that at all. The Bowers thing, man, you know, I, I don't think in the super flex part of things, I'm, I'm okay. I'm taking JJ over Bowers, but it's a, it's a one move uh, fade, if that's what you want to call it. But I'm not fading him at all. The landing spot isn't the most favorable, but, you know, those things can be changed in a hurry and, and Brock can get his in a hurry there's just there is some question marks but you know i'm okay with it i think i think that's kind of how I, I see it going like i said five could be any one of those three uh wide receivers and then i was actually at the sixth spot here and i took jonathan brooks here because like i said in the way i have my super flex rankings set up it's <laughs> it's those three wide receivers after you know those four that went in front of them and then there's quarterbacks obviously in there um but I took Brooks here mostly to just see how it would feel. This is a mock, yeah. uh, and and you know FFPC drafts were this weekend, uh, and I'm in some one quarterbacks that that are in there that are a little older, and I, I have some super flex tri they, they do tri flex they call it in there, and Jonathan Brooks was you know middle of the draft in a lot of those drafts, so he he's definitely getting some respect put on his name, and I I guess. The more and more I thought about it, I was like, man, I, I, I could probably make a pretty compelling case for Brooks there over over really any of those wider. I think Ladd, like I said, can come out and make a big difference right away. Worthy uh, with Rasheed Rice being suspended, may, maybe so. And I mean, we just talked about Brian Thomas a little bit. It seems like had Brooks not had an ACL, I think it would be even more pronounced right now that Brooks loves because he did really get yeah. the, got the capital and a good landing spot and and. He's got some size. He could probably take over that backfield. Chuba didn't really run away with it. Um, Miles Sanders, unfortunately, uh, was was a bummer over there. Now it might be a slow start for Brooks here. So he, you know, you may hear a lot of "Wall well, by Brooks" after this, but I don't think anybody's going. They're, they're drafting him knowing that it's possibly going to be a slow start. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, we've faded running backs pretty hard in the fantasy community. And the reason that I do have. Uh, those three guys ahead of him, the lad, the Thomas and and the worthy is just when it comes down to just straight up, that's the currency, right? The currency right now in general overall is that the wide receiver position because of we, big fantasy, we can call it is <laughs> and, and rightfully so, you know, there is a shorter shelf life and there has been some running backs that have stung you over over the, the course here. But I think we're seeing a slight course correction here. Possibly. I think some people are starting to zig because everybody's been zagging a little bit. So I feel like the running backs have, there seems to be a little bit of an undertow right now about some running backs and kind of being like, Hey, we've gone too far from the, from the big draft folks. And you know, which we've always kind of said, Hey, still in on the running back. It just has to make sense. And there's good value there. So now that the values are getting decent, Brooks could really be a really, really good value here. And, and really, I mean, when you're looking at the landscape of running backs, how many, how many running backs do you feel comfortable with? Like, I'm not, I'm, I'm saying not in the, the rookie draft, I'm saying overall, right? How, right? how many of them, like, you know, you got the top mm -hmm. three and then outside of that, it get that, that, that drops off a cliff pretty quickly where you're like, I don't, I'm not terribly comfortable with uh, very many running backs at all. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think I think Brooks and Benson for me personally, but um, I think they're both in this kind of tier with these wide receivers. You know, obviously we don't have um, team structure. You know, you mm -hmm. you might have needed a running back, but <laughs> but sure. in general, I don't I don't think there's that far off. I think Brooks was from a talent perspective and from evaluation perspective, it seemed like he was pretty high up there, if not number one for most people. Um, you already laid out the case for him to be successful. You know, it's an ACL, which used to be scarier than what they are nowadays um, with all the advancements. So, I, I mean, I don't mind the hit, the hit. And people are thirsty, man, thirsty for those running backs. And so there's a lot of teams with a lot of older squads. We talked about this on a couple pods ago. 
where I just kind of have a feeling that the 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 Calvary that have come in in the last couple of draft classes just haven't haven't filtered through. They haven't, you know, there's been a lot of what you thought were going to be decent shot to be hits that just missed the target and mm-hmm. have kind of faded into the nether. Um, and so we're we're la- we're we're relying on these older Kamaras and these older veterans, right? That to, to get us over this hump. And so, but what that does is it creates the scarcity in the market, which then creates right. opportunity for like Brooks. Like you could get Brooks here um, for this team or for for your team in the middle middle of the draft more than likely if you earn that then you're right you're right there and maybe you are running back away or or like you had laid out the, there's potential to trade out of, of brooks later on because the asset value is going to go up once points start scoring once yeah. the scoring starts happening either way however you want to say it it's it's the it's the truth so um yeah i i, I was kidding in the background there said idiot um <laughs> just because i know that somebody will say that but but yeah that's they're they're all kind of there's just one big giant tear there for me. I, I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't see enough separation. You you can argue lad with the opportunity cost, but then it's a completely new situation. You can argue Brooks because there's so many new targets, but in its new situation, but he is a running back and they're scarce. You can, mm-hmm. you know, you talked about rice. We don't know what's going to happen. He may not be suspended to next year. Who knows? Like, right. but worthy could you have opportunity. Thomas is going into a bunch of targets as well. Um, and, um, you know, and, and that probably, and then I have Benson up there because of the talent, but he's got James Conner in front of him and, and we'll get to him in a second, but I'm just saying like, that's, you know, that's kind of why I have all these guys lumped, lumped in, uh, in one section of my brain as I'm, yeah. and as I'm working it out on the one quarterback show, I'm working out my tears as we speak. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, so basically for me, if you remove the quarterbacks in my super flex rankings, Brooks and Benson would be right behind that tier of Worthy, McConkie, and Thomas. Um, and, and again, because of the, the value and the currency of dynasty fantasy football, uh, that, that's kind of the way I, I see that, that the, the wide receivers are a little better currency. It's, it's you know, you get a dollar ten on your one dollar, then the running back might, you know, it's a riskier proposition that you could, it could be. 50 cents real quick or that thing could go to two dollars really fast because the scarcity um, but yep. people are a lot more reluctant but again the landing spot's good we, we saw uh, Rashad White really eat under uh, Canales there in Carolina they've invested in the in the offensive line which was horrible last year they have a first round pick who played well as a rookie and then terrible last year so maybe a little change of scenery with Canales will really bring that that along uh, and the amount of volume that we saw with Rashad White, uh, you know, I think was somewhat by they didn't really have any other answers. So you might not quite see that year one ACL six months uh, into Brooks's career, but I think it could be coming. And if you can actually get a good runner of the football where, you know, I like Rashad White, he's a good player, but he's, you know, everything will kind of points to that fairly inefficient with the actual running of the football, very good pass catcher. Brooks, pretty good pass catcher. We'll see if he's anywhere near where White is, but I think he could be a lot more effective uh, actually running the ball uh, than Rashad White has been in the early parts of his career. So that's kind of my spiel on Brooks and, and why I, I took the dive there and and went in on him. Um, but, you know, definitely wanted to tr- justify that a little bit. But, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I think, like you said, it's not worth getting red in the face arguing about Brian Thomas or this guy or that guy. But, uh, you know, that's the point of this is to kind of give you some different perspective and, and some mock. Mm-hmm. So I went six, but, you know, home leagues again, we touched on it. They're built differently. They don't listen to a lot of the mumbo jumbo that everybody else is listening to. So running backs still do hold a lot more weight and they do take a lot longer to go down to that 50 cents on the dollar kind of mark. Then so in my two, three home leagues that I have, I I very much intend to see Jonathan Brooks going one four one five or one six especially if it's not tight in premium so yeah no doubt i mean it's may uh may what is it may yeah, 5th, Cinco Cinco de Mayo, yeah so um i mean you know if you're listening to this then you're you're probably tuned in but uh there's there's chances are your home leagues or other leagues they're they're <laughs> they're not tuned in yet they've, they've still got uh right. they still got the summer before they start tuning in so good on you um i think we talked about these next six if you want to unveil them and yeah um so we have one seven worthy brian thomas at one eight so pretty much as advertised outside of brooks jumping up in there but like i said ffpc i saw i saw a lot of brooks one five one six one seven uh area there so 
you know, yeah. I guess I, I, I jumped the shark a little there because we did this before FFPC drafts. Uh, then Keon Coleman at 1-9. Our first quarterback was up the board at 110. Uh, Trey Benson at 111. And then Jaden Daniels at 112. I actually saw Caleb Williams uh, in the two or I don't know if it's two or three one quarterbacks that I have at FFPC still. Uh, but I saw Caleb go one five and I think one seven uh, in those in mm-hmm. those one quarterback drafts. That would, that's a little too early for me. Uh, but I think we talked about Thomas a little. We could hit key on, but let's talk about these quarterbacks as you're in the back half of it there. You took one of them. Uh, so let's we can kind of use your thought process there and then probably double apply that to Caleb, maybe. So what were your thoughts with with taking quarterbacks here? Yeah, I mean, I was really hoping Caleb was going to come fall all the way down to me because, I, like you said, I could see him going up into that uh, the middle of the round um, range, especially if you're quarterback needy. And again, if you're in the middle of the round, you're probably in the in the, the nowhere zone, needing some playmakers. And mm-hmm. Williams is obviously it's it's on record. He's going into one of the best situations that a rookie quarterback could go. He's a rookie quarterback, but we've seen them succeed, and and he's got enough targets there to you know. He's he makes uh, Daniel Jones jealous uh, on how many targets he's got got for him uh, right out the gate. But um, but for me, Jalen Daniels was an easy pick here. Um, you know the upside of of um, you know it was between Mayor Daniel, so I was a little surprised. Um, and we'll get to that later. But but for Daniels, it was just the upside of the running. And and if I'm a championship contender team, you know it depends on who I have, right? If I have Josh Allen, I'm probably honestly I probably won't take. Daniels there I, I, I may have you know but it wouldn't have been as easy of a pick as as it was on the clock at this point um I just feel like the the next set of wide receivers and uh running backs are all kind of um you know we'll, we'll see um but right they all have old. an obstacle a decent obstacle to overcome exactly yeah or you know a little bit of waiting I mean mm. Uh, Leggett was probably he was he was up there for me just because of draft capital and I just love that dude but yeah but um, you know I just thought Jalen Daniels kind of deserved to be in the first round I mean he's he's got the wheels to to like when I'm playing one quarterback I'm looking for that difference maker Mm -hmm. that that's more than just the standard you know dude like I love Justin Herbert but in one quarterback I'm just not very strong on Justin Herbert Mm -hmm. I like my Lamars I like my Josh Allen's I like the dudes that can run. And so Daniels just fits that mold. And so for me, it was a pretty easy pick um, um, at, uh, at the 112. Yeah. Jaden Daniels. I, I, I agree with you. When you, when you get the wheels, you get the, the, the running element to things. I'm okay with that. And then you're also, you know, obviously this is a mock. like you said, we don't have teams associated with that, but these would typically be for the most part, if you didn't trade those teams, if we're just staying in order, um, you know, these, these would be teams who are already good teams. So you can take a shot on on guys, quarterbacks who could be difference makers. Um, and I'm, I'm OK with that. And that's, you know, Caleb would probably I, I'm OK with taking Jaden Daniels at 112. I guess I'd probably push him a little further down for, for me. But I, I understand it uh, that that Keon Coleman pick there. I would swap Trey Benson with that. Um, I would go 111. I would move that up to the to the Keon spot. And then if you wanted to take uh, two quarterbacks in there, but, uh, you know, I like like the idea there of, of you know, Leggett or per- Pearsall or A.D. Mitchell there um, or, or Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman would probably be dancing around 11 or 12 for me here. Um, like you said, same, same applies to Caleb Williams, but even more upside. I think you don't quite have the rushing per se, but you're just you're going into such a great situation and, and such a you know, unique skill set from from passing on structure and off structure that, um, you know, it's it's hard to turn down at the back half of, of that first. So anywhere yeah, he's such, he has such a high floor that it's it's right. it, it would be really hard to like the, the rest of the quarterbacks in this class. There's all, all kinds of arguments you could make and 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 be justified in, in lots of ways. But Williams is the one that's like. I mean, just just out of the gate, he's he's he should have such a high floor if he's capable of operating an offense. He should be in decent shape, you know. Yeah, um, I, I agree. That's out of the call. gate or off the rip? Out of the gate doesn't count. Only off the rip. I haven't even dropped it yet. <laughs> uh, Jay was thirsty, so yeah, he'd, uh, yeah. He'd stick that in man. No worries, no worries. Yeah. All right, so let's hit it. Let's get into the second round here. Right oh, off the rip. I, was, I thought you were gonna. <laughs> I was waiting for you. Was waiting for you. We got Blake Corum at the two one, Pearsall at two two, Sinnott at two three, 
AD Mitchell 2-4, Leggett at 2-5, and then Jalen Polk at 2-6. So Blake Corum at 2-1, that's probably a little too high for me. Uh, now, I have been seeing him in Superflex and one quarterbacks go pretty high, and I think that's just basically those guys are saying – they're still looking at the draft capital for Kyron and saying, well, he's got fifth round draft capital and he's got third. Obviously, Blake Corm's just taking the I just I just don't view it that way. I you know, one of us is going to be wrong and one of us is probably going to be right. Uh, I like Blake Corm a lot. I'm on record of saying I like Blake Corm a lot. I just I also like Kyron Williams a lot. And I think the Rams like Kyron Williams a lot. I think they were in trouble when they didn't have him and they didn't really have another option. So now you have a clone who's, you know, a better pass blocker. Blake Corum was outstanding as a uh, as a pass blocker there. So that's a, also a huge benefit of, of keeping Matthew Stafford upright and healthy that you can bring Corum in and, and get good uh, blitz pickup for Matthew Stafford. So again, don't dislike Corum. I just feel like Kyron's really going to have a hold of that job for, you know, the foreseeable future with Corum spelling in there. I don't see Corum as being remarkably better than Kyron Williams, and in, in very, I actually see them as the you know the terrible Spider-Man meme that gets misused. Kind of similar uh, mm -hmm. human beings and yeah. how they function. Um, so, and I think the Rams saw that they're like, hey, we don't lose anything between these two guys, really. So, um, yeah, Kyron, the huge opportunity share might go down, is going to go down some, but. I think he's still going to get his and, you know, Coram's a nice little backup for me, but I think I got to shift him down, um, you know, a few picks here down, down the line. And then Pearsall, I think is a fine pick there. Sinet, we're, we're one quarterback, uh, yeah. tight end premium. I, I don't mind that at all. AD Mitchell is huge upside swing of what could be. We, we all love Leggett here. The, the analytical guys are just going to continue to pound the drum and say never, not, not, not now, not ever. Uh, and, and that's okay. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to keep, keep it in their little bucket of saying, Hey, we're going to play this, this coin flip game and we're okay playing that game and we're not going to reach outside of it. And like it's reaching outside of it could be a smash. Uh, there's it's a, he went to Carolina. So I feel like it's unfortunate that people have that Mingo taste in their mouth and they're saying this is a Mingo clone. I don't see that. I think he operates much differently than, than Mingo, does um we've we saw what what Leggett could be and and there's a ton of context that goes into Xavier Leggett's of his backstory and you can you can find all that out and figure it out but it's uh he's went been through a lot and then been through some guys and then COVID and gray shirted and yada 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 but he comes out and and absolutely shreds it this year uh, and then the last pick that I, I took there is Jalen Polk I I like Drake May there I was I wanted to take Drake May I was thinking about taking Drake May but I, I, for here, for this purpose, I was like, I'm going to I'm gonna back off Drake May and just to see if the slide continues. And then, spoiler alert, one pick later, Drake May went. So what are your thoughts here through the 2-1 um, through 2-6 area? We can dive into any one of those guys that you like a little more or picks you didn't like. Big D. Yeah, I mean, Leggett, uh, Senate, and Persall were, were kind of all up there for me. The rest of them, I'm, they're back half of the seconds for me. I'm... Being a UW guy, you know, I saw Polk up up close and personal. I really like him, but I, I've I've said it before. I don't think that he's a necessarily a difference maker. I mean, at two six, it's it's fine. Uh, two right. six is not not that big a deal for me. But but just um, like I would rather have, I honestly personally would rather have Wright and I have him in front of all these these players uh, myself, and he doesn't go f until a little bit later. And that's mostly because of the way I play, the style I play, where I'm I'm looking for the upside and 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 the shot, you know. But Persol and uh, Leggett are are probably the two that I would have. Uh, Persol, Leggett, and Wright are probably that next tier for me, and they're all, they would all be ahead. And then of course Drake May, which you which you touched on. I'm just not into Mitchell. Um, I I don't know. I wasn't um, hot on him as a prospect, and then I didn't really enjoy the landing spot for him. I, I think Indianapolis is, um, you know, I, I, I love Pittman. I, I still love Pittman. I, I love Richardson. But I, I want to see what Richardson looks like in this offense um, for a full year. I want to see how that supports and a healthy JT. Like, what what does that look like? And, and so for me, I'll – I'm not out. I, I'm, I'm never out on any player, as right. you know. It's like sure. it's it just it's depends on the cost. Operate, yeah. So yeah, I, I, 
whether it's analytics or film or, you know, or, um, you know, off the field stuff, like, um, you know, I, I just, I, you know, we're, we're playing a game, they're playing a game. So it's kind of, I, I, I'm never out. I'm, I'm looking for, for the upside, the spark and, and the, you know, obviously some value and cost. And so, um, yeah, I, I don't really have much to say about Mitchell outside of like, he's a wait and see for me. Polk's a wait and see for me. Yeah. Quorum, I, I, same thing. Like you, you use the Spider-Man, um, meme, but I almost feel like if he takes off the Spider-Man mask, he, you know, he's, he's like the lesser of the two Spider-Mans. I still feel like Kyron <laughs> yeah. is, is a little bit more, um, I I'm, I'm horrible with actors names, so I'm not even going to attempt to say which one was the worst Spider-Man, let alone that's an argument for another day. But the point is, is I, I just don't, I like the running back in the Rams. I don't mind quorum as a prospect, but I wasn't hot on him. And then when Kyron's there as well, I just, I feel like the floor there is just way too low for yeah. me. Um, this, this high in the second is, is I guess the best way to put it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll wrap up this way by, by hitting on an AD and Polk. Cause I, I went on the, uh, player profiles round table it's a live show with, with those guys over there good good group of guys fun to talk to them and they asked me about polk and ad mitchell and this the way i kind of described it there was um I, i'm taking ad over polk i like i like the idea of of ad at this point with with one quarterback two four um i just that's yeah. it's basically to me it's that's all he's dripping with upside essentially um but you know the, the the downsides are some analytical holes and some effort maybe potentially and not trying all the time and then you know that that's TBD. Um, he seems like a, like a like a good dude, uh, but for the most part, the, my analogy was Ad Mitchell is like the hedge fund manager who comes to work with a bow tie and a nice pair of slacks and a good suit um, and could make you millions of dollars, or he could fuck around and catch a charge and you could be fucked and be in some court proceedings and you're you yeah. know he took your money and ran with it and and now you're all tied up in some in some garbage and Jalen Polk is like a dude who's coming to work with a hard hat and some dirty clothes and he's you know he's gonna make you some probably pretty decent money but the only way he's he's really gonna make you a lot of money is if he works up through that company for a long time and ends up owning it you know one one way yeah. or another so it's just like and to me Jalen Polk's like chasing Jacoby Myers like production uh, you know mm -hmm. for the most part and I, I don't really see a huge path to being this 20 point a game kind of guy where I certainly could see AD Mitchell being a 20 point a game type of guy or or a complete zero Polk I feel like has just such a better floor where AD Mitchell's such a hey take take your swing baby take a take a big old swing there so that's it's kind of the way I see those guys as polar opposite prospects as polar opposite human beings um I think the Colts do a good job of scouting. You know, we've, we've given them a lot of credit over the years. Now they've, they've been a little rocky here for a second, but uh, I'll give Ballard his, his due and, and Polk just feels like a Patriot, right? Like does all the little things blocks well um, and is going to have a chance to be that new generation of Patriots with, with Mayo there. So that's kind of my spiel on those two guys and, and kind of the way I see it. So let's, let's keep it moving here. Did you have anything to add or are you, you, you good? No, you're good. Okay. Yep. Let's go back half of the second, and then we'll kind of go a lot faster through the third and the fourth here. We got Drake May, Jalen Wright, JT Sanders at 2-9, uh, Roman Wilson at 2-10, JJ McCarthy at 2-11, and then Bucky Irving at 2-12. So like I said, I forf I didn't go with May there. I kind of like May mid-second. Uh, just it's one QB. I think that's about the time to start taking those QBs that aren't like trim like the ridiculous one. Um, so like I said, I would probably push D Daniels back in here a little bit as well. And, and Caleb would be the end of the first rounder for me. Um, but big, that's who big code took. And then Jalen Wright actually has been getting some love in the one quarterbacks and a lot more love than I thought, uh, he would be getting from the draft. And then in general, people be have, you know, really God landing spot helped propped up his, his value here, which is, which is great. JT Sanders at two, nine Roman Wilson at two ten. Jamie McCarthy. At two eleven, the next quarterback, fine with that, and then Bucky Irving, um, you know, take I'd probably take Marshawn Lloyd uh, in front of Bucky, but uh, that was your pick, so I'll let you talk about that a little bit. But we can hit Jalen Wright real quick. You, you you were giving him some love. You said you would take him, you know, probably a little earlier in the round. We 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 like you said, 
even earlier than that is there you're playing a potential there's there's a yeah but and somebody in front of all the rest of these running backs for the most part that make it you know playing a little bit more of the long game but if you have to circle one and put an exclamation point next to it i'd say Wright is 1a and maybe lloyd is 1b for me uh but Mm-hmm. Right, just going to Miami, putting speed on speed on speed. Uh, a chain not finishing his or not not playing his entire rookie season, and then Mostert being older, oft injured. Um, so I don't I don't think it's a, a terrible shot to take in the second round. It, it feels like an all upside swing. Uh, I believe his ten second split was faster than A chain's uh, ten second split from from the forty yard dash there. So. They know exactly who they're tar- targeting and exactly what they want, and they went and got another one just in case uh, HN even comes out and misses time at any point. You can plug right right in or Mostert. So I don't hate that at all. But give me your right pitch, and then give me a little Bucky Irving talk, and we'll we'll get uh, on to the third and fourth rounds here. Yeah, I mean, you covered most of it with right. I mean, I, I just Mostert's on another year. He's an older, uh, older vet, great player. Um, it might be a little bit, but there's enough injury risk and there's enough um, running back points in Miami that yeah. you just got to be excited about. Right. I mean, he's he's a he's a full upside ceiling play. He's got a low floor. But, you know, for for a running back, I kind of I kind of like that. I kind of like that he can come in and splash if there's an injury between the two backs that both um, I've had, you know, obviously a Chan has only had the one year, but most are before that had some struggles. And, um, and so I, I just feel like opportunity cost and what he can actually produce and how fast that dude is, is and, and how, how he can be schemed, uh, out there in Miami, just, just screams to me, um, you know, great upside, great play. I probably would take him as high as, um, in fact, I think I said this, but I'll say it once more. I was thinking about him at the one twelve uh, on the Ooh, turn there. Um, spicy. Uh, yeah, that's pretty high, but I, I think just the, the upside and spicy till it's not, I mean, dude, like I said, uh, FFPC, I saw him going, you know, turn. So you're not, you're not far off on some people's thinking there. Yeah. The scarcity of the position and and just how much he can provide is, is there. And then with Bucky, you know, I, I personally have Lloyd in front. Um, I gave Irving the nod just because I, I, there was a lot to like about his play and I'm a big Josh Jacobs guy. And so I still have a hard time. Um, you know, if, if I'm not a huge white guy and I'm a big Josh Jacobs guy, and I still think Jacobs has a lot, a lot enough to give. And so I feel like if I'm betting on who can beat out, you know, um, the competition, I think Irving can carve out a bigger role than Lloyd can, um, in that offense, uh, year one. Um, but that's, you know, again, uh, that that's with no injuries. That's with no risk. And they're they're I wouldn't say they're one A one B. I would say nine times out of ten, I probably would draft Lloyd there. But um, but I, but I do like Irving um, for the same kind of like I don't know thinking of um, I, I like Irving over Corum. Um, I like Irving over um, uh, Polk and probably Wilson. So you know, it's it's kind of. Uh, not not everybody is high on Irving, but right. I, I kind of see just, um, you know, in PPR in the quarterback position, when I can get a flex play or a, a running back to, to plug in that, um, that has the catching, catching ability. And, um, you know, obviously there's some changes in Tampa, but I feel like that, uh, that could be a good thing for a new dude coming in. Right. And yeah, so, so that, sure. that's kind of my spiel. That's kind of why I went that direction. Um, there's enough players um, in this third tier, uh, third round. I mean that that we could talk about that it, it that were was in play for me, but uh, but um, I I think at the end of the day it was just more of a I want J- Josh Jacobs to succeed, so I'm gonna go with Bucky Irving. <laughs> yeah, um, at, at, that, at that moment in the yeah, draft. Yeah, I, I I get that. Uh, I I think they're dying for a committee, at least some sort of a committee there down down in Tampa. Yeah, I think White they they, they didn't just didn't have any answers. Bucky to me kind of screams of. Kyron Williams when he was coming out where a lot of hype, a lot of, a lot of fun produced when he was on the field, got better every year and then just terrible numbers in, in testing. And so he's just dead. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, I think, I don't, I think a lot of people don't hate the landing spot a ton uh, and, and still like the guy and they're willing to look past that. And the once again, it's about the value and, and being right. So 
I'm probably would like to see, but I, this is one quarterback, so I can't say. I, I will say that you know probably two twelve would make some sense there, um, I guess. But uh, especially, well, the quarterbacks really haven't. Two more of them haven't even gone. So I'd probably push Bucky down a little further. I would definitely take Marshawn Lloyd, but I understand what you're saying there. So um, let's push on to the third and the fourth round, and we'll we'll move kind of quickly through here. Three one off the rip on three one. We have Troy Franklin coming in. Then we have Marshawn Lloyd, Bo Nix, 3-3. Three, three. Uh, we got Burton at 3-4, Baker at 3-5, Penix at 3-6, Corley at 3-7, McMillan at 3-8, Estime at 3-9, Vidal, 3-10, Rattler, 3-11, and Ray Davis at 3-12. So, I think Franklin, Lloyd, Burton, Baker, uh, those are definitely my favorite shots there. And then Corley and McMillan uh, are, are, are fun as well. So, again, even in, in you know, kind of the difference in Superflex and one quarterback, usually by the end of the second, you know, you kind of have thwarted off what the second, what the Superflex kind of means. And we're back to kind of standard issue rankings the same way you would see it in Superflex for the most part. Here you saw the quarterbacks – go down even a little further so it pushed uh some of those guys in the third down a little bit but that's usually the kind of the way i view it is that uh you're usually bumping the quarterbacks around round and a half and then you know bonix and Penix kind of went a little later here so those are kind of my shots in the third uh and i i like i like franklin a lot like we, we talked about lloyd you know the the packers will employ a little bit of a committee as well kind of rolling through the season. I also am a huge believer in Josh Jacobs. There's a lot of Josh Jacobs slander about how bad he was last year. I'm not buying it that he's on a decline already. I think he was just hurt on a bad, in a bad situation um, and needed, needed a contract as well. So comes out, gets a contract. I think he's going to go perform really well for the Packers. He'll thwart off Lloyd. Lloyd will have some, some nice, um, some nice games and some nice usage here and there, but uh, he's he's going to be on the back burner a little bit. So I, I think this is kind of, you know, right-ish area. Like I said, maybe bump him up into that 211, 212. Uh, but the rest of those guys, Estime, Vidal, I like taking those shots. You took the shot on Ray Davis. Uh, you know, why the hell not? All, all these guys kind of, all, all these uh, third round-ish running backs all really landed in in nice situations. Like there's a, there is a guy in front of you, but they're all kind of offenses that you're like, I could, you could really get behind these, right? You know, Lloyd in Green Bay, Estime in Denver, Vidal in uh, LA, the Chargers, and then Ray Davis in Buffalo, you know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, complete opposite back of, of Cook, right? Yeah, I mean, I think the story for the third round to me is that this is a draft that's going to inject some life back into Dynasty. Um, I think oftentimes uh, in the last few drafts, you get into that, um, especially mid to late third and into the fourth. And, and, you know, you're, you're, you're wishing and praying and hoping and, 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 you know, try, trying to figure out uh, a way to justify why, you know, I'm, I, um, I, I can take this player, but a lot of you, you kind of, you know, you, you talked about it. All the running backs have opportunity where it's pretty clear. There's, there's, a, there's, there's an obstacle, but it's pretty clear what that obstacle is, and they can overcome it. All those, um, all those wide receivers that were taken in the third, same concept. I mean, Burton's going into um, a Cincinnati offense tied to Joe Cool. You know, uh, Higgins is in. Is he out? Is he? Where is he? Uh, Boyd uh, operated in in the three wide receiver sets there for for a while and and did pretty well and then all, um, also hopped in when when there was injury. So he's got a great ceiling. Uh, Baker is probably a better play than Polk um, for for me, just from an upside potential. A lot of people um, feel that see, way. Yeah, I could see him kind of kind of overplaying just because of the play style of Polk. I think Polk has the higher floor, but Baker, I believe, has the higher ceiling. Mm -hmm. You know, Corley. Who knows what the Jets are going to look like? I know we wanted to see the Aaron Rodgers led Jets <laughs> last year. That didn't happen. Well, it did for a couple plays, but. Um, you know, so we'll see what it looks like, but it, it felt like they needed uh, some some help there. McMillan, I had higher than Polk. I, I love McMillan. Same. I think it's kind of a bummer on the landing spot for me because I also like Palmer. <laughs> but uh, but but you know, I, I I like Tampa Bay and I like what they're doing. And um, you know, and, and I'll just touch on all, all those quarterbacks. I, not Rattler, but but Penix and Bo. 
I mean, those are uh, Penix is a, you know, wait and see approach as everyone knows. And I won't open up the can of Atlanta worms here, but, but Bo Nix is, is one, if you can get him in the third in a one QB, um, you know, if you're, if you have the, 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 there's one QB leagues out there where somebody tries to capitalize on the market and has like five or six yeah. QBs on their Every roster, time. you know? Yeah. And, and Bo Nix is an easy kind of plug in and, and get, get some points while, while you wait for him to realize that's a bad strategy. So, um, and then Ray Davis, um, uh, he was my pick. I, I mean, uh, again, you listen to what the coaches have been trying to do and what, you know, they've, they brought in everybody under the sun to kind of help, um, Josh Allen at the goal line. Um, I, I like Cook, but I don't think he's uh, he's that goal line potential. And right. I think Davis is. I mean, the, yeah. the dude's a big, big. You know, he's older, but I don't give a crap in the yeah. third round. I'll, I'll take you know late third all day long. I'll take Ray Davis just for the upside of his uh, of the touchdowns and the, and that offense. And you know, there, there's a lot of changes in Buffalo um, with with Rice out, um, Rice out. Sorry, Diggs out, and um, and you know. Uh, Coleman going in and what, what's it going to look like? And yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, anytime there's opportunity when you put a rookie in there, that that's, that's a good thing. There's, there, there's a, 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 there's no one already there that they have to knock off the ledge. I don't think cook is um, he's, he's the one a right. Cook is the one a that's, right. that's not what I'm saying, but Davis can play the role of money in, in Detroit. And I think that they're probably going to lean a little bit heavier on the run this next year. Yeah. And um, you know, so, so usage wise, I can see him being a, a, a Monty light, um, up there in Buffalo. Yeah, I like it. I like it. All right, let's get into this fourth round. I'll rattle it off real quick. We have Luke McCaffrey at four, one Shipley at four, two Tez Walker at four, three Theo Johnson, four, four, uh, Braylon Allen, four, five Malik Washington, four, six Gorundo at four, seven, uh, Eric all at four, eight. Corey Schrader at 4'9", Coker at 4'10", Brendan Rice at 4'11", and Cowing at 4'12". So if you've been following along, you know that Washington, Malik Washington, and Cowing are some of my favorite wide receiver stabs. Tez in the fourth round, like, what? sure, what a fun fourth round stab that is to Baltimore. Um, and Luke McCaffrey's got the Levi's, and you know, which is the jeans, uh, if you're mm-hmm. not following. We use that a lot. Five hundred ones, all right. Um, five thirty threes or whatever the new hotness is. And he got some decent draft capital, but it seems like nobody cares. I don't know. He seems just you know kind of dead. But I just, what what a fun shot. Shipley, I think, falls into the category of those running backs that we were talking about a second ago. This is mm-hmm. good good spot that you trust. I mean, Saquon's an in, you know Shipley's an injury away from from having some decent run, uh, and and probably will get a little bit of burn even with uh, Saquon being healthy. We'll see how that backfield shakes out. Uh, Theo Johnson, sure. I've tight end premium. So that, that's kind of where I stand. Anything on the fourth round stand out to you, Big D, and we'll get out of here? I think Theo's, it, it, you you just mentioned him, but he's, you know, he's really interesting to me to see what happens with um, Waller. Waller, yeah. If he's going to, re- I don't think it's been announced yet. At least if it did, I, I missed it. But, you know, Waller, if he's going to retire, if he's going to come back. I think what it's a, the same yeah. concept, right? They they've got uh, they've got some change there. You know, neighbors is going out. Uh, the one of the biggest winners of the draft, Daniel Jones, is uh, is, is hanging around. <laughs> and you know, you've got Locke there too, which um, people are you know point out to well, me. But I, I've, I've anytime I've Daniel Jones Locke. is around, everyone's going to be looking at the backup. You know, Thank yeah, you. it's always it's always the backup for for the DJ. But I, I still feel good about. Um, about the shot on Johnson, just because I, I feel like they're still in need of offensive weapons. And he's, uh, I mean, um, the, 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 probably the worst thing about, um, Shipley and Johnson is the colleges they went to. But I mean, <laughs> other than that, no, that's just a shot for, for Jay boy, Matt Foreman and, and, for and Jay over there on the ones and twos. So, um, yeah. And, and Cowing was my last pick. I, it, it's just, it's pure upside at, at four twelve. So yeah, I love the upside and, and the possibility there of him. And, um, but Cowing is a type of player that the last couple of years would be in the third round, like middle third round, you know, yeah. like he just got married a, a little shot. And, and it's not, not as easy to project, but you got to wait and see. I love that shot, man. Yeah. And, and so what I said about um, the third round earlier and just this draft in general, if you're new to dynasty, 
there's not always players like this this late in the draft. I, I, there are in ways, you know, people are going to hype some people up. But right. as far as an actual talent perspective and, and some of these landing yeah, spots. Yeah, I think um, the, the two together, the talent and, and where the, some of these guys and the opportunity that could be presented to them on on, yeah. on offenses that we trust are are really, really pretty solid. Yeah, so it just, uh, you know, if um, we've got some trade shows out there, um, you know, go back through the channel when you're uh, liking and subscribing and, and and check it out because, you know, we, we talk about the threes and the fours a lot um, in Superflex. Obviously, the values are a little bit different because of, of the quarterbacks. These quarterbacks should be a little bit higher, but that just pushes all that other value down. Right. So um, down, down into the threes and the fours. So um, check that out. But, yeah, I mean, the, overall, this draft was great. I, I don't think there was uh, – yeah, you know, right. uh, one, one QB was, yeah. yeah, a lot of missteps. I feel like one QB is, uh, it, it's a fun, it's a fun uh, piece to dive into every now and then just to get that different contrast and kind of take the spotlight off those quarterbacks and, and point it on some other positions. So, yeah, um, no, I agree. Yeah. And, uh, you know, following up on the, uh, who's the guy from Seattle that, that uh, the Giants brought in there? Drew Lock. Drew Lock, yeah, yeah. yeah. Drew mm-hmm. Lock feels like he's probably got a good Adderall connection for for Daniel Jones. Feels like he's been, you know, <laughs> that could have been the sole reason they brought him in. They were like, Jones's Adderall connection seems like a little, little, little. It can't rough. be that hard to find an Adderall. <laughs> I'm just I mean, kidding. I just kidding. Especially in New York. That's a wild. That's a wild video of of our boy DJ looking just. Bright eyed and bushy tailed there. Let me get an uh, an impersonation here. <laughs> <laughs> He's just scared. Flip it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The only thing comparable was uh, Homeboy for the Dolphins. Uh, or uh, was he the Dolphins? Where they put the tacos all over the screen. Oh, what yeah. Was, Adam. Was Adam Gase. <laughs> Gase. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. We started with tacos. We're ending with tacos. That's right. Happy single to mine. To the clown. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well done, Big D. We'll catch you next time. Peace. Hey, make sure you like, subscribe. Uh, you know, hit me up on the five dollar holler. The Patreons. I mean, we got the draft kits released. Come check it out. Uh, ADPs, mocks, mocks up the wazoo, mocking no. so you don't fuck it up mm-hmm. all day every day. And then if you're listening on the podcast, just go down and hit that five stars. You know. We don't even pitch y'all. We don't pitch y'all at all. At all. You were trying to get out of here without pitching me out at all. Yeah, I mean. Hook me up. Sometimes we'll get out of there without Hook your boys up. Couldn't let it pass. Appreciate y'all. We'll be back live this week and to come with a bunch of uh, live drafts for your pleasure. Peace. Get rid of the guy with the yellow hat, please. (laughs) (laughs) Which laugh exactly was it that was upset? It's upsetting you because... Don't give me a fucking three-star review for a laugh. You know? If you want to comment on the laugh, comment on the laugh. But do you hit me with the five stars, Dynasty Guru. You know what I'm yeah. talking to. And if you're if you're listening to this, you better get back and give me that five stars. Jerk store called. They're running out of you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where'd you get those suits at? The toilet store? Peace. <laughs>